Hello YouTube, this is that BMS guy and we're into 2022 here. So what you see in the picture is a dynamo weight that I'm gonna put on this bike. Um, I wanna mount it here. So it's below the front bag and just out of the way and also protected by the rack itself. Now it might not be protected from water flying off the tire or anything flying off the tire <clears throat> but I can always make some kind of skid plate or something the idea is that I'm going to make a metal plate similar to this Nitto light mount now this should mount like this the problem is I don't want it offset like that now I could put it here but it's too close but if I mount something very similar to it or make something similar that goes down below and just above the tire the light kind of sits versus this this is just a little too short and i'm going to try to make it kind of in the middle so the light's in the middle so it doesn't disturb my ocd um i have other mounts i got the middle one that would be perfect if there wasn't a rack because i got the brake mount but the rack kind of has been the hurdle because you have a bag that kind of blocks the whole handlebar. It goes as high as the handlebar. So the light has to be over here and it's still just basically shining the bag in my face. So I want a light that kind of sits either in front of the bag or underneath it. So over here we have some stainless steel plate. And what I'm going to do is actually cut it into a nice fin strip, kind of similar to what that line is on there already. And then I'm going to bend a piece and drill holes in it and have myself a light mount. Anyway, I'll get this video started. So we're out here in the Antarctic shed. I make a little piece of the stainless steel. I don't need that much. I just need enough to make it a little bit bigger than the Nitto thing. So I'm kind of going by the fact that if you just roll this up, its elbows get generally something a little bit bigger than that and I gave myself a good inch and a half for some close. wasn't the easiest cut because I just had the hacksaw I could use that guy but I should have I would have had to cut this in a short piece first and then cut it again and I don't know if it would have been actually faster Start bending this guy, maybe following the edge just to make sure it's smooth already. And those are things. So this may not look like much, but it's getting closer. It's actually going to mount on the inside, not the outside. I guess I'm going to mount on the inside because of the fact that as it's falling down, it kind of tightens the bolt. But I just need to bend the middle part and I'll get the light. Or I'll start drilling holes. Now I'm drilling the holes after I'm done because. I don't know. It seems like it's an easier job. We have a friend. Say hello to the camera. Anyway, I'm getting this progressed. Okay, so let's just see how this does. Got this. Square as I can get it. And this far over. I'm going to end up rounding the edges on the top and the bottom sort of like this this is just going to be this, a bigger version of this obviously a little bit thicker version of that since it's hand bent with the vice a hammer some vice grips some, some what do you call it crescent wrench and we got some stuff to work with a nice what do they call it a break a break would be beautiful but i'd be able to make this in seconds might crush my hand in the process but you definitely make at least a square piece and then just cut it anyway a lot of the holes look for my um hole puncher to help throw the holes it's in here somewhere i don't know where so as we're a little further along kind of just make sure it fits on there good i can't really hold the light there and hold the camera so Generally speaking, it's right where it needs to be. I can space out the, the light with a washer or something to push it over a little bit, which is pretty easy. 
and it can still mount on the outside. I was actually going to mount on the inside, but it seems like it's too far over on the inside. But the outside's kind of fine. Um, other than it might need to be kind of tweaked a little bit to get it to sit the light straight. It, this is getting right where I need it to be. We'll progress a little bit further. So here we are, the finished, sort of finished product. We're going to try polishing this guy with some means of sanding and stuff. It's stainless steel. Round off the edges is best it will let me. But yeah, there's a little bit of an angle to it, so it moves it forward. Not really good at the round edges, so we're just going to work with what we got here because this is just a raw piece. So I'll polish this guy up. So we have the light mounted. Had to twist it, true it in a sense, try to get it to look like it's sitting straight. I have these, I guess you can kind of tell that they're there. It's kind of hard to see them. Well, they're brake washers. Man, look, look at all. Maybe this way? Some way? Flashlight, something? I don't know. You can kind of see them. But they're kind of the brake pad spacers. So I can kind of align the light better. Maybe even I'll twist it a little bit. Try to get that to be straight. But other than that, right now it looks kind of in the middle. The mount tightens up. I'd just rather have a, light, a little bit shorter of a bolt here and other things. I just got to get these wires situated. Or at least plug it into the hub and then Take it for a test spin. Okay, so it the light is mounted on there. I got the wires sort of hanging on there at the moment. These wires right here are kind of for the rear tail light. I gotta cover them with some shrink wrap, I guess. But I'm just gonna leave them right, right where they are. Let's plug it into the dynamo. Now with this one, there's a white lead that should be the ground, it says. So we'll look at that. B Nice if I can just get it to like kind of light up without doing anything, but I don't know if I can do it because it's a front wheel. For some reason they put these on the front wheel so you can't just pedal them. But you kind of see. I don't know if you can see. You kind of see it's light in the wall. Okay, so we're going to go outside since it's nighttime and I'm going to do a test spin. Okay, so I'm going to take this out for a spin. As you see, it's a pretty nice fog out there. So we'll see how bright this guy is. So we have light on the front. Now I'm in the fog, so this doesn't really help anything. But it doesn't flicker after you start moving. It's actually pretty nice. Probably not as bright as the other light that I have, the true 150. But I can always just use that on the top bar when this is on the, the bottom. Anyway, I think this essentially is on there. I think it takes some getting used to look at all the little lines on the ground and stuff, but maybe it's just too close to the ground. like that dynamo light works. Okay, so after riding around the neighborhood, the only thing I noticed is like these little, I don't know, I guess that's the water that's on it, because it doesn't seem to block the water. But it will stay lit, actually, when you stop, but it doesn't stay lit in front of you. So I don't really like that too much, but it looks like it's working fine. I guess in, Let's get back inside and go over what I did. So after a test ride, came in. Now I'm just going to tie up all the wires in a second. Um, I'm probably going to make some kind of junction block, actually, so I can use the sine wave of it. Um, obviously, it just stays lit for a while. It doesn't turn off. Yeah, so underneath, I actually use these V-brake pad spacers with that bolt to kind of help it align better it seems like it's kind of perfectly in the middle but at least i can 
you know, adjust it this way, that way, up and down, maybe make it not face up or down. And I'm going to put some kind of pad between this and the light. Other than that, it looks like it's fine. Might get a shorter bolt here, you know, just to make that not look like that. Other than that, it looks like it's okay. Um, when I was riding, it was kind of drizzling, or fog actually, and it was kind of covering the whole light with beads of water, so it kind of made it look like there was like lines and stuff on the ground, and I'm not too into that. Maybe I'll put some kind of rain protector too on that thing. Actually, I guess the bag itself would kind of protect it. I don't know. Anyway, hope that was kind of useful, or I don't know. It just shows that I put this IQ excess bush and molar light on there and now I have a kind of permanent light for my touring bike setup as far as the front end goes anyway thanks for watching